G'day guys, welcome to Lucy's channel, Lucy Lane, the Queen of Belmain. Today, we're gonna talk about your new puppy checklist. With these checklists, I've actually divided them up into two, a basic checklist and an advanced checklist. So make sure you hang around to the end to hear about the advanced checklist. Super important. Let's get stuck into it. So the first thing that you wanna get when you bring home your German Shepherd puppy is a crate. Now here's a few reasons why. Crate training makes toilet training super easy. Well, I've had a toilet train Lucy within a couple of days. Uh, she had toilet training mastered within a week and very few accidents within the house in amongst that time frame. The next reason is uh, having a safe place to put them. So when you leave the house and that time will come, uh, your, pu your puppy needs to be in a safe and secure environment. The last thing that you want is your pup to be chewing through some electrical wires connected uh, to the back of your TV when it's plugged into the wall. And the next reason is that you want to crate train your pup and have a crate is you need, to, you need your puppy to develop a good relationship with crates. So Lucy sees her crate as her den, her bedroom, it's her sanctuary, her place of safety. Now that is a healthy relationship with a crate because as your pup grows up and you, you're gonna get out and about more, you may have to transport your pup, your pup need to make, go to the vet, you may need to fly your pup overseas or, or whatever, your pup is going in a crate whether you like it or not. So early on, let's develop a good relationship with crates. All right, so the second thing you're gonna have to get your pup is a high quality dog food. So most likely the breeder will send you and your pup home with a high quality kibble that they're on and you will have to follow that for whatever time frame that they give so they get their macro and micronutrients as needed. But then later on you can transfer over to something else. But um, we decided to keep Lucy on Blackhawk. That's what she was originally on from the breeder. She's just gone from the puppy kibble to the adult kibble and we also supplement uh, some raw and cooked meats in there too. That works for us very well. It's a super high quality kibble, um, and that's just something you're gonna have to look at down the track. You can also go raw as well if you're into that, and you just need the guidance of a veterinary nutritionist. The next thing you're gonna have to get your pup are collars, leads, and harnesses. So, highly recommend to get a good quality, but cheap collar to start with as they're a pup, as they're gonna outgrow them very quickly and get them all dirty and destroy them, whatever as pups do. But um, when I first got Lucy, I actually got her this like really pimping designer, yeah, designer, I know it sounds ridiculous, but a designer dog collar with spikes. It was leather and it had these like little fashion spikes that like poked out. It looked badass, man. It was really cool. But um, it just it just like pretty much fell apart within the first week. So <laughs> whatever, um, just because it's expensive doesn't mean it's good. Um, but I found this here worked really well as a first collar for Lucy. And then once she got a bit older, I actually upgraded her to this beautiful collar, uh, collar from Marjo Leather Designs in Canada, handmade uh, leather. This goes in the ocean, this goes everywhere. This is just as durable as they come. Um, it's handmade with her name in it. It's fantastic, love it to bits. Another thing you can get is a harness. Um, a lot of people like to walk their dogs on harnesses. Probably not a bad idea if they're an avid puller just so they don't ruin their trachea around their neck from you know a collar pulling on them the whole time. So these are just gonna have to be some things you get and obviously a good quality lead. So you might wanna get a couple of leads, you might just wanna get a short lead for walking and then you might wanna get a long lead, like a 30 foot long lead or something for training uh, a little bit later on, but you might as well get it then as well. Get your pup and that you're going to need a poop bags. Love this brand, Animes. These are biodegradable. Um, I actually didn't get them for that reason. I got them because they're super thick, but hey, biodegradable, another good reason to get these things. Super cheap, good to go. Packet of like a million, they never run out. So, poop bag. Okay, the next thing you need to consider are dog beds. So, we have a couple of dog beds situated around the house, and I can tell you what worked for us and what didn't work for us. So, what didn't work for us were these types of dog beds here. These are quite fluffy and it kind of encouraged Lucy to rip them apart. She would go through that we had about four of these dog beds until we switched on as dog owners 
and decided not to get her those dog beds again because she would just destroy them in, in three seconds. You couldn't blink without her going through one of those dog beds. So then we transitioned to these dog beds here, which are really easy to clean as well. They're super firm, flat, they're like a nice firm mattress for her on the floor and that works really well. And that actually kind of feels like the same material as our bed, which Lucy likes to sleep on. And so with this firm mattress here, um, this isn't the exact one, but this one here is very similar. So we actually have three of them. We have one in a crate, one next to our bed, and then one in the back of the car. Ah, doggo toys. Now, when you bring home your puppy, you wanna have a whole bunch of chew rings and things like that. Um, they're really good, Kongs, bits and pieces. But what you also wanna have is extra special toys that you utilize for training um, as high value rewards as well, like these. These two toys here are Lucy's most favorite possessions in the whole world. Lucy only gets to play with these when dad's around. So this is the Euro Joe bite ball. This is amazing, she loves it. And this is a red line uh, bite pillow. This is all. This is great for target. Well, they're both great for target, but they're, they're two awesome bits of kit. Again, I just don't let Lucy have these in the backyard and she can go nuts. She has her special backyard toys and those are things still like chew rings and little puzzles and stuff like that. So guys, get an arrangement of toys and if you find out your dog is really toy driven, um, do utilize those certain types, most likely be tug, tug toys like this or like a ball. Um, utilize those for training down the track so don't leave those specific toys laying around. Grooming, there's a couple of different sections with grooming, hello. Uh, we have brushes, sh brushes, shampoos, and toothbrush, toothpaste. So with a German Shepherd, I highly recommend getting a Ferminator. They're the most amazing thing in the world. Help get that double coat out just to help maintain it. They're gonna shed all year round anyway, but it just makes less mess on the uh, floor less messy around the house. And Lucy loves a good, it's really good. It kind of exfoliates her skin for her and just, it's just good all around her. But you can't have a German Shepherd without a Ferminator, highly recommend it. You wanna get a Schlicker brush as well, just helps get those little bits of debris out of the fur. And then just a regular brush because it is quite therapeutic all over their coat. Now they're the three th the brushes that I use. With Lucy's uh, shampoo, I use like just your normal organic shampoo from the pet shop, nothing special. Um, but it is it is organic and it's tried to what I only use on Lucy because she does have sensitive skin. Now I only wash her like maximal four, maximum four times a year because with a German Shepherd, you don't want to strip the, um, the oils out of her fur. Now by wash, I mean she only gets like four soapy baths a year. Lucy gets freshwater rinse downs all the time because she's always in the salt water swimming. Now, when it comes to toothbrush and toothpaste, you can just get like awesome peanut butter flavored toothpaste at the vet, highly recommended. Um, just good dental hygiene practice for them. But also, another great part about brushing your dog's teeth, it gets your puppy very um, comfortable early on with you playing with their mouth, putting your fingers in there, playing around, because not only is it gonna make obviously brushing their teeth when they're older and big, um, really easy because they're not going to bite you. But then like later on down the track, it almost develops that um, like training for when you have to put pills, you know, if you come back from the vet and you have certain medications you need to put in their mouth or you need to check their mouth. Um, and it's just good for like when, you know, if you ever have little kids around and kids stick their hands in your dog's mouth or something, like just having them, just being able to like play with your dog's mouth is super important, especially when it's big and powerful like this. So you can do whatever and Lucy's completely fine with it. And that's, that's what you want. So brushing your dog's teeth isn't just important for dental hygiene. It actually creates a relationship where you can play with your dog's mouth and she's not gonna bite you. Guys, one thing I did forget to add into grooming here were nail clippers, super important. You get some specifically uh, made nail clippers for dogs and you can just pop over their nails, super easy. And it's got like the safety barrier where you can't go too far so you can't hurt your dog's paw and you just clip it, you beauty, good to go. Highly recommend it. Wipes and cleaning products. So you're gonna need both of these things and probably a lot of it. Um, I recommend baby wipes because puppies get into a lot of stuff and you may need to like wipe their butt and under their tail and along their floofy bit if they get diarrhea, they get that stuff everywhere and your puppy will. 
um, and also the cleaning pores before they come inside. That's always easy. And another thing with cleaning products, obviously you're gonna have to have a clean sanitary home when you have a pup, but a certain type of cleaning product. So you're gonna wanna get ammonia free cleaning products. So pretty much just get the organic stuff uh, with no ammonia in it. And this is a reason why is because the ammonia in like floor cleaner and stuff actually triggers something in your pup's brain to, uh, to like tell it it's okay to pee on the floor. So ammonia, the smell of ammonia makes your pup wanna pee on the floor. So that's gonna be counterintuitive when you're trying to toilet train. So that's just a good tip for young players. No chew spray or just hot sauce. So uh, if your pup or your pup may decide it's going to start chewing on some things that it shouldn't, it's an easy deterrent is that you can use a no chew spray from the vet. Um, it's just gonna deter them away from chewing on things like wood and stuff like that and save your furniture. Um, Lucy was a bit of an avid chewer in the backyard. We used the no chew spray perfectly fine and it just deterred her from that. Um, another thing you can use if you don't wanna get the no chew spray from the vet or pet shop is just hot sauce. But just be careful your dog doesn't have a taste for hot sauce because um, I found out that you could use hot sauce and it deters like 99% of dogs. So I went and covered the whole backyard in hot sauce when Lucy went through her early puppy chewing stage when she chewed up all the back deck. Turns out Lucy loved hot sauce. So I ended up just seasoning the entire backyard for her. So just be aware of the hot sauce. You need are uh, your last vet shot so your pup can actually go outside and play in the park. And your flea, tick and heart uh, worming medication is going to be super important as well, especially if you're in a place like Australia where we have those nasty paralysis ticks. Now, there is a bit of a movement going on that uh, you're getting some like, um, like hippies that don't wanna give their dogs the medications to prevent these things. Um, and they would rather use like garlic and stuff like that. Look, I probably wouldn't recommend that because if you do get a paralysis tick on your dog um, and you don't know about it, it is game over. So I don't wanna take that risk. So I have Lucy on the best stuff that you can get and it is at no detriment to her health. All right, let's get into the advanced list. Number one on the advanced list is a clicker and treats. This is gonna be super important when you wanna start training your pup. You can train your pup without a clicker, but I found clicker training my pup made uh, training like super easy. It's almost like crate training makes toilet training easier. It's kind of like a clicker makes training easier. It's just one of those things. So essentially, um, the click just means like, yes, like, okay, like good job. It just tells her good job. So she won't touch the food until she hears the click. Good job, good girl. Alrighty, number two on the advanced list are enrichment toys and Kongs. So these are freaking awesome, Lucy loves them. We can fill up this Kong full of treats and it's just fun and games for hours. So this specific Kong, I highly recommend it. This is from Stylish Hound. Um, I'll have a link in the bio if you wanna grab one of these. These are fantastic. Now, another enrichment toy that Lucy uses is this little enrichment mat here. So what this is, is we've had a few of these types of uh, enrichment toy before, but this is also from Stylish Hound, and it just looks like a little fluffy like pillow. And then we can hide treats all through this, and then Lucy can, you know, it's a bit of mental stimulation to go for it. On a day like this, where it is actually pouring with rain outside, for about an hour this morning, Lucy spent chasing her Kong around the house. She had a great time. So good mental stimulation for your pup, gets them to think about them, gets them to use their brain. And you can actually also use them for feeding time as well. Make them earn their food, work their food. I've done things like that through um, feeding Lucy's dinner and her breakfast through with her Kong. So um, these are highly recommended. Link down below if you wanna grab some of these from Stylish Hound. Alrighty, number three on the advanced list is a little day bag for your adventures. When you take your pup out to the park, I used to find in the past, I've got a pocket, I've got my phone, wallet, uh, poop bags, ball, tug sleeve, whatever, man. I've got heaps of gear on me. Super easy to throw it all in a little bag and take it with you. So I use one of these. This is from Stylish Hound. 
They are an amazing company here in Sydney. Um, you don't have to get one of these, you can just use a normal bag, but you know, if you wanna be stylish, grab one of these. Uh, super roomy, super protective, little protective parts for your phone, awesome as. Alrighty, so the fourth thing you're gonna to wanna to get your pup and have organized when you bring your pup home is a puppy trainer, dog trainer. Highly important you get stuck into this ASAP because when you bring your pup home, before you know it, time is gonna start flying, normal routine is gonna come back and you're probably not gonna establish those ground rules, basic training and all that good stuff. So try and get to a puppy trainer ASAP, get one to come around, start establishing those basic skills, the basic commands, basic obedience, boundaries, all that good stuff. Another great option too is if you wanna to go to puppy school, awesome, a lot of new people with a lot of new pups, you're all in the same boat, Good place to socialize your pup, do all those little bits and pieces, learn some basic stuff as well. Or number three, if you don't have those options available, you should uh, look for a good online dog trainer. Online dog training is starting to get quite big now, and especially in times like these with the whole pandemic happening, probably not a bad option also. All right, so the fifth thing on the advanced list is take time off work if possible. When I brought Lucy home, I took about two weeks off to get her settled in, but it was more to get me settled in and my wife settled in with this little hairy dependent child with teeth that's practically a little land shark. So it like took some adjustment. Like honestly, we actually got home and we had Lucy just running around the house and we're just like, holy crap, what have we done? <laughs> it just sinks in all of a sudden. Like, the last thing you want to do is like, oh, got to go to work tomorrow because there's a lot of stuff you have to organize and there's a lot of testing and adjusting over those first like few days, that first week. A few things don't work. You might have to change a few things here and there and it can get a little bit stressful, especially like when you've never had a dog before and you get like a weapon of a dog like this one here. Hey, Luce. So highly recommend a bit of time off work. And number six on the advanced list, um, this will help with socialization in the early times is get a dog walker when you do go back to work. Now, this isn't you being lazy and not walking your dog. Lucy's still got two walks a day with me, but at the, in the early stages, those first, the first month that we had her home, I, uh, once I went back to work, my wife and I were extremely busy. So we wanted to, we were away for like eight hours a day. So we had to like break up the day for her. We just paid a dog walker and she broke up Lucy's day. She would actually come in and take Lucy on a little half an hour walk and actually brought around a little uh, Labrador puppy the same age as her. And they actually became really good friends and they're still friends to this day. But it was just awesome, broke up Lucy's day, stimulated her um, and gave her, to develop those early socialization skills on really early, which is fantastic. And obviously Lucy's very friendly with any dog now. Anyway, guys, that is it for us for today. I hope you got some value from this checklist and I hope you and your puppy start ticking and flicking as you go down. Um, if you got value out of this, please hit the like button. Please, if you have any questions, drop a comment below or drop a comment below if I have missed anything. I try to obviously go into it with some little bit of detail, but not like overwhelm anyone and get too deep. Um, yeah, anyway guys, have a good weekend and we will see you in the next video.